What's up, y'all? It's Jonathan Owens here. Another episode of The Word Spoken. Yes, yes, yes. We about to talk about this. Yeah, you saw right. You saw correctly. Lust. We, we about to talk about this today. And we about to dive deep. And I pray that that, that that beautiful word that we all have, that you have it ducked off in your closet, in the corner, collecting dust, that thing right there is all you need for this topic right here. This discussion is ailment. That destroys so many people. So let's talk about it. First, we gotta just first we gotta just understand. Oh yeah, the Bible does cover it. The Bible talks about this, and a lot of people know. But in what effect or what aspect does it talk about this? And how can we, man, strictly, man, please, just how can we, man, Jonathan, please give me something. I don't want nothing, you no know, theory stuff. I don't. You might be saying I don't want no theory stuff. I don't want no. You know, just hypothetical, whole bunch of stuff. I need something practical, some stuff that really works. Well, that's the word. I'm going to give it to you. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. Let this thing really work for you. I promise you, by the grace of God, you walk in His, in his ways. And you're doing these things, I promise you. Oh, it's going to help. So first, again, let's let's look at this. This is the word. How... Like, first of all, did, how does the Bible even just, just address it? Because it does. Let's get into that quickly, right? Just right now. So Matthew 5, 27 to 30. Let's look at this and let's see how strictly does the, does the Word of God talk about this. And Jesus don't play no games. He plays no games. 27, verse 27 says, You have heard it that it was said to those of old, You should not commit adultery. But I say to you, that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, well, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than your whole body be cast into hell. If your right, your right hand causes you to sin, man, cut it off, cast it from you. It's more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Now, if you think Jesus was playing right there, <laughs> man, he wasn't playing. He he telling you so much so, I need you to cut that thing out that's causing you to mess up. I need you to cut it out like entirely. And he gives this vivid, vivid imagery of cutting off your hand or plucking out your eye like to people who they they would have like been like hearing this like like lord what in the world are you talking about like because god was making it he was making it plain now i need you to cut that thing out now what does that mean well let's see but before we get into what that means let's see let's see if we have something else here first but let's go into yeah let's talk about that what does that mean now this might hurt, <laughs> man. Cutting off your hand is gonna hurt. Just that's the imagery that God's giving. I was just about to say it might hurt some people to cut that thing, to cut that thing, you know, off that's causing you to lust. And the same imagery Christ was giving. Oh, you cutting off your chin, you cutting off your um your hand. That's oh, that's gonna hurt all right. And that, and you see, that's kind of like that feels like that's what God was trying to like tell you, like cut it off. Like that's gonna be painful. Oh man, but it's gonna save you in the end. So let's let's get into this. Let's be real. You know, you gotta show, you gotta show that you know they got a beautiful woman on it. You got a beautiful guy on it, uh, a handsome guy, and you know that that thing is what's attracting you to go to that show. God is like, cut it off because it's better for you if you go into. <laughs> heaven without that show or into hell with that show if that show is causing you lust after that individual and that's the reason why it's making you watch that show cut that thing off 
Because it's going to be better for you to go into heaven without it than to hell with it. Now, the, <laughs> the amazing thing is that we got to understand, we got to understand this, like, it's, how is it, how is, we, we have, first of all, understand is that God has already established this in the Word. You can, you can check out, you can check out, um, you can check out my last video and you can see this, that there's a difference. Like, God has made some people, some women more beautiful than other people, made some hand, men more handsome than other men. Oh, that's possible. We already saw that with Saul in the Old Testament. He was he was handsome, like more than any other man. We already saw David, saw Bathsheba. She was super beautiful. That's what that's what caught his eye. So oh yeah, so God made beautiful women and handsome men. Now we're gonna get into more into that. I want you to establish that. I, I, I want I want to establish that, and I want you to understand that that is a basis. That's fine. But we're going to go into why or when that is not fine. So, but now, again, <laughs> to be real, to be real, it's like, come on now. The disciples thought, if you thought that the people in Jesus' day was different, it wasn't, man. I'm telling you, it wasn't. They had prostitution. They had money. They had rich people. They had, they had sex. They had drugs. They had... They had liquor. They had. They had every. Oh, we talking about humans. They had everything that we had problems, just in a different way, but the same content. It's dealing with the same rudimentary things: money, sex, power, drugs. Like it's the same, same, same deal, man. So, if you saying that, dude, it's too hard. Like I, you, you, you're telling me something to do that's too hard. Lesson to stop lessons is too hard, so I don't even want to get into that. Dude, the disciples thought the same thing. It was about another topic, but the disciples said the same thing you saying. My like, Lord, dude, this is impossible. Like, come on. And what listen what let's 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 show let's show what Jesus told him. So <laughs> this this is what Jesus said. So Matthew 19. Now look at Jesus. Now now this is this is, I told you, Jesus didn't play with people. He didn't play, and he's coming with it. So, let's come with it. Matthew 19, let's start 23, 23rd verse. But, just a little background. This was about, this was about uh, a rich man coming and asking God, and coming and asking Christ about these situations. And Christ actually gave him, like, you know, like, not so much of an out, but... Like uh okay, just do this. Cause he asked, what 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 man, what do I need to do to, to enter into the, the eternal life? And Christ just told him, you know, you know, follow these things. And then, you know, he said, I did all that. Well, you know, you don't do this. And I, he said, I did I did all that. Okay, you think you're big and bad? Go sell everything you got, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. That man said, um, uh, I gotta get up out of here. <laughs> He left, and, he's, and then Jesus turned to his disciples and said this. Let's 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 look at what Jesus said because, <laughs> oh my goodness, the disciples were just like us, man. Then Jesus said to his disciples, "Surely I say to you, this is oh this is this is Matthew 19, starting the 23rd verse." Then Jesus said to his disciples, "Surely I say to you that it is hard for a rich men to enter the kingdom of heaven." And again, I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When it says, when his disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished. And they said, nah, who then can be saved? And the background of this is like, because disciples still had a different mindset about salvation and the kingdom. They still didn't, they, it wasn't clicking for them. So they thought the rich and mighty, because since the rich and mighty had everything had everything in their society. If you was rich and powerful, like the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and all, or other people. You had everything. You got to get everything. So the disciples are also like, "Do this is the kingdom of God, your kingdom, Lord? Like, if the rich people can't get in, who can then be saved? Who then can be saved? Because they they rich, they get everything. Then who then can be saved? So the same thing you saying about lust, Lord, you." you 
You know how hard this thing is. How is this even possible to stop this 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 lust? Because you made it like some people might be like, Lord, it's your fault. You made so many beautiful women. You made so many handsome men. How do you expect me to stop lusting? And and disciples like same same thing. Who then can be saved? Who then can? How is this even possible? Jesus looked at them and said, Oh yeah, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. <laughs> so look at what Jesus said. Oh, yeah, with, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So with you, it is impossible for you to stop lust, stop stop lusting, but with me all things are possible. You can't do it. That's why you need me. So, if we just establish that's why we need God, oh my goodness. So how do we stop this? How do we stop this? Scripture. Now, first of all, if you is it's different between you're married or single. Because in first Corinthians seven, if you are married, the marriage the marriage itself can take away a lot of lusting. It won't it won't stop it. It's still oh, it's the well, It's still gonna be crazy and 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 coming at you full full storm. But the marriage itself can take away a lot of that, as Paul mentioned in First Corinthians seven, saying that he talks about like the temptation of lust, how you being together into intimately with your wife will stop and and curtail um, temptation and lust with Satan trying to tempt you. So. So it's, it's so if a, if a man or woman is is you know being bombarded by lustful thoughts by the enemy in his flesh, it's a quick it's a quick righteous thing to start thinking about your spouse sexually, because that can actually curtail all the other things when you know that I do have somebody to go through go to to be intimate with, that can curtail all those other thoughts that can try to like come it don't stop them, but it's just a little band aid to help, so. What about the single people? <laughs> what about the single? Well, what am I go to next? Single. This is gonna help single and married people because we both we both 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 need it. So now understand again again as I talked about earlier, there's a difference between lust and beauty. God made beautiful people, or handsome men, but it's different between lusting over that and now now it becomes sin so how does that happen it's because when you recognize beauty being beautiful handsome too long when you recognize that too long it can then lead to being lustful how is that possible what are you talking about well when you harp on somebody's beauty or you harp on somebody's handsomeness when you harp on those things those now thoughts come in because you harp on how beautiful someone is or how handsome someone is. Now that thing starts to work. That flesh starts to work. The enemy starts to work because you harped on too long. How is this possible? Because James, the book of James, chapter one, says it that when we sin or when we are tempted, we are tempted by our own fleshly desires, by this own flesh, because what we feed into it. We start to become tempt tempted by it, so we are tempted by that own that sinful flesh and evil desire. So the more you harp on beautiful people or handsome men, lust starts to fester because your flesh notices that you doing it. You you you're the soul. Your flesh starts to feed off that, and now it starts to be lustful because you've harped on something too long. By just seeing somebody in passing, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, she got beauty. Uh, what is that supposed to mean? You know how many times the enemy tried to come at me, but that was one thing I actually had learned by seeing like a counselor. He was talked about, yeah, you can recognize the beauty, which will help curtail some of the stuff as well. Because yes, I could recognize, I could recognize the beauty instead of trying to fight with it. I can recognize it and stop it right there. And it'll, it'll help you soothe you, but like, okay, it was all right to just to recognize the beauty because it, it I, yeah, but what what does that mean? I ain't going no farther. I can recognize uh, the, the the woman can recognize somebody's handsome, but the moment you stop it right there and be like, okay, so what do you mean? I see you, devil. 
I, I see what you're trying to save. Like, yeah, I reckon, yeah, I recognize they're handsome. I recognize your beauty, beautiful. So what? Like, literally, so what? I recognize that, but I'm not finna damage everything I got. I'm not finna think about somebody else that ain't my own. I recognize that, but I, it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. So, so that's personally, that was the battle that I had to face. And when I first got saved in high school, didn't know about any, any other thing as in, in, in a senior, didn't know about any of this type of knowledge or this type of good things I can use. So I was tormented day and night because that was the one thing that I always struggled with that damaged like about everything. And then when God took over, called sanctification, strength, strength, strengthening me. Now it's one of the strongest areas in my life that I'm not, I'm not even phased by it. I still had to fight it, but I got so strong in the area that it's no longer like my Achilles heel. It's now my right arm because now I'm so strong in that area by the grace of God. But it don't matter what you, I, I see you Satan, but you're a liar. Now, how can we again defeat these things with the scripture? Look at this practically. Look at this practically. You need something? Here you go. Let's let's dive into this of Philippians 4. Let's hurry up, get this done. And let's let's come on, let's finish this on home in Philippians 4. And a lot of people probably know this chapter already too. Cause I've talked about this and a lot of people talk about this because this is like one of the best verses that talks about this type of thing. So let's look at Philippians 4. I started at the eighth verse. Let's go there. So it says, finally, my brother, well, let's, let's see if I can go up to uh, well, the other one, we know. We, let's let's start at six too, because that's that's just even though it's talk it talks about like the mind. Let's let's that's 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 in there too. So let's talk about it. But the what I want to harp on is that verse eight. So six says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind." Well, that's important. That tail end of that is important because by giving that thing to God and praising and thanking him, he will guard your heart and mind, which is where the lust resides. Now, how do you do that? Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things that are just, whatever things that are pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good report, if there's any virtue or if there is anything that's praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Hmm. And oh, let's go to nine. The things which you learn and receive and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, this is so important because the Lord is telling you right here, you get those thoughts, you get those lustful things, the lust starts to build up, you see something, boom, I want you to hop into praising God or practically, no, pra praising God is always practically but if your mind is so bombarded by like, you know, you can't conjure up, you know, thinking God about different things, immediately go into, man, I, I thank you, Lord. I see that, but I know that's not of you. I see that. I know that's not of you. Man, you've been good to me, Lord, <laughs> man. And let's say if you saw, you saw it right there. You saw it right. You, you know what you see. If you see something right there, you'd be like, Ah uh, man, Lord, I thank you. You are good. You made me see you. You made me when I saw that see that it was not good for me. I thank you, Lord. I see that. I, I understand. I understand what the enemy was trying to do right there. I understand what my flesh was trying to do. And then the moment you recognize God and how good He is in that situation, and how He just He just helped you not lust. The more you, it starts to get, man, I promise you, the more it starts to get so much easier to stop it. Cause you like, when the thing come again, you be like, oh, man, I thank you, Lord. You're good. You good. You good. 
You good? You're good. And the devil is not going to like that. He going to keep coming harder and harder. But the more you recognize and give God thanks for whatever you want to over, over that thing that's trying to make you fall, the more that thing can eat, I'm telling you, it won't even, it, it, it will be underneath your feet that easy. It'll get that easy to you. It'll get that easy. And it'll still be, at times be hard because Satan will come with something not only lustful, but disgusting and lustful. So where it'll, it'll make you react that in a certain way because he wants to get you that badly that he'll come up with the most craziest, lustful, demonic thought you ever heard in your life. And you're going to react to it. You're going to be like, ugh. But then you'll get back to like, Lord, I thank you. That foolishness that he just, man, that I thank you, Lord. That foolishness he just tried to come with, man, <laughs> you're so much better than that. Like, Lord, you're so much better than that foolishness that tried to come at me. So I thank you. So uh, it'll get easier. Now, how, and what does this do? This is what this does. So what this what this does is tell you that in James chapter four, verse seven, what does he say? Submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. The moment you start doing that and start giving that thing over to him and doing all those things that guys that showed you to do. Satan has no choice. He has no choice i'm telling you he has no choice but to flee he says submit to god resist the devil and he will flee so say he has no choice but to flee and so the moment you start doing those things all the scriptures are going to just keep going they're going, they're going to keep coming into play that verse the verse where it says god would not allow you to be tempted above what you are able but will provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it that scripture is going to come into play because god is going to Take away the temptation he's gonna say enough devil and i get out of here he he, he just he, he just he's gonna do it and that's where your your strength lies and that power of that word that has everything you need man so i hope this blessed you today i hope this was good for you today and god gives all the glory he always does he is the lord and first of all if you don't know him you know accept him today as your lord and savior then he can help you with that lust. If you're already a believer, you got the power in your back pocket. Or better yet, you got the power in your hands. Because whether you're on your phone or you're in the physical Bible, that power is in your hands. The word is right there. And it's ready to deliver you. Uh, this is Jonathan Owens again. I'll see you next time on the next episode. Lord's willing. Peace.